Natalie Drew for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by Jonathan Banks here in Vegas. It is fight week for the Trilogy fight. How good is it to be here? Um, it's always a pleasure to be a part of any fight. This is boxing, you know, I love it. So. It's awesome. I mean, it's not just any fight this week. You know, we've been waiting a long time for this fight. Four years in the making. We're finally here, you know, for the trilogy fight. In terms of history of rivalries in boxing, how would you rate this fight and this rivalry between Canelo and Triple G? How do you think that goes down in history compared to some other, you know, very famous rivalries that we've had? Well, as far as boxing history, it rates pretty high because... Any every generation got his own high profile fighters. And um the higher the profile the bigger the bigger the fight. And um with this being the trilogy, this is um as far as this generation goes, it's one of the biggest, definitely. But throughout the sport, you had so many trilogies that ended great. And um like we just had the last trilogy we had was the um the Wild Defury trilogy. I'm sorry, which was beautiful, man. And they did not disappoint either side. I don't know how any one true boxing fan could be mad at the outcome of that fight. It was a beautiful fight. Both guys showed everything you want to see in a fighter. Everything you want to see in a fighter was showed that night. It showed grit. It showed heart. It showed determination. It showed skill. It showed um, how, how, how great and how different... Um, um, Fury's culture was or is and um, it just was amazing to me I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I think this fight is going to be it may not be that well it, it will be that much drama you know it, I think it would be similar to that maybe minus a couple knockdowns because neither guy has touched the canvas but it's going to be it's, it's going to be just as much hell in the ring fight night that night for this fight as it was for that fight yeah, I mean, people have, have been waiting for this fight to happen. It is finally here. you finished camp now. We're in fight week. But how has the camp gone for this fight? And how have you have you seen any changes in Triple G? The fact that this is the first time up at 168. How has the camp been different this time? I think the camp has been the same. You don't, you don't need to train different because you, you're going to be eight pounds heavier. For what? It makes no sense. You know, you, you train as you about to defend your middleweight title. You know, I mean, I don't understand. I don't. I wouldn't understand if, if he started training different. I would stop him asking, "Why are you training different?" Because he's 168. Like for what? There's nothing you can do to be a stronger puncher. Like to, you are the strongest puncher in the one of the strongest punchers in the history of the division of the sport. So why even why even attempt to try to become stronger for what? It makes no sense. So the goal is just keep your middleweight speed, keep your weight where it needs to be, where you're comfortable, and let's go fight so we can go win. The difference with this fight this time is Canelo's coming in as the champion. He's got the belts. Triple G's is get, trying to get those belts off him. In terms of the bookies, they're seeing Canelo as the favorite. Do you think that that plays into Triple G's hands, the fact that there's no pressure on him, he's coming in, and he can just focus on what he's got to do? Uh, make no mistake about it. There's pressure on both guys because they both want to win. That's the pressure. He don't, he don't care about the titles. It ain't about the titles. Once you become a household name in the sport, you don't care about titles no more. You care about, you care about your wins and losses. That's what matters. How, when you perform, how you look while you perform. That's what matters. And that's what he's worried about. He's worried about, um, I'm sorry, let me, refer, let me retract that. He's not worried about anything. But his thoughts is he wants to win. That's it. That's why he works so hard, so he can go win. And that's really all that matters. Odds, what people think, eh, it makes no difference. He, he put in the work so he could fight hard. And he, he wants the victory. Canelo is saying that he thinks it's not going to go the full 12 rounds. He thinks he's going to stop Triple G at some point. He says he wants to end his career. What do you make of that? The fact that you know neither of the, them have ever gone down. So what do you, what do you make of those, those sort of statements that Canelo makes? I also read that um, he walked on the moon and made his footprints and wrote his name in the, in the sky. 
I haven't seen any of it, but I mean, maybe it sound nice. So that's my thoughts. It sound nice, but still never happened. So will it happen? I don't think so, but still something remain to be seen. Now, this fight, obviously, we're in Vegas. It's happening in Vegas. We, we know from the previous two fights what happened there, the, co the controversy around the, the decisions, the scorecards. Was there any hesitation from you accepting the fight in Vegas and now we're here? Would you have preferred it not to be in Vegas? Do you worry about the decision of the scorecards again? I would prefer it not to be in Vegas. But I think L.A. would have been a perfect place for it. That's my opinion. But and it had nothing to do with the decision. Because um, you can have the same judges, you can still do the same thing. So, but I will. I, that's my opinion. I think the fight should have been in California. I think it would have been great at the Staples Center or something like that, or some other stuff of Arena Plaza. It could. There's so many different places you could have it in California, but it's in Vegas. So what can you do? Yeah, we are here in Vegas. Um, talking of you know the judges scorecards and taking it to the decision is there any part of previously what's happened with the the previous two fights that makes you approach the fight differently maybe tactics in the fight that you're trying to either not let it go to the, to the scorecards or to make it so definitive that, it, that there's no controversy like there was with the previous two I mean it doesn't matter how definitive you feel your fighter wins if when you got to go off the opinion of someone else then it's just your opinion doesn't matter. It's only the matters the opinion of someone else. And you have no idea what this a person, what these three people is looking at. Or you have no idea if they yarned in between the punches. They have no idea if they're looking at their phone in between in between punches. You have no idea. So um that's the that's the the messed up part about depending on three people's opinion because you don't know what they're looking for, you don't know what they're looking at, you don't know if they if they're looking at the copy box numbers to see who hit a person, who got hit more, you just don't know. It's so up in the air about the judging, so you just don't know. Will that be playing in your mind and in Triple G's mind on fight night or will that go sort of to I the back mean, of your mind? He shouldn't think about that at all. It's my job to think about that. If I if anybody think about it, it should be me. But he shouldn't think about that. He got a he got a guy that's coming to, to try to take something from him. You know, so no, he shouldn't be thinking about that. He got enough to deal with with the fighter. Now we've we've all been waiting for this fight. It is happening Saturday night. We'll, you know, we'll get a winner from it. If Triple G gets the win, what is next for him? What is he saying to you that he wants to do next? Because he's achieved so much, no one would would even question if he decided to retire. What is he looking for next? Um, we don't talk about that. I don't. I don't ever discuss with my fighters what's next. I always discuss what's now. So I don't. I don't need, if, even if they came to me talking about that, I would stop them and tell them, whoa, 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 don't talk about that. Shit. Don't talk about that with me. I said, we got to talk about the now. I don't, there's nothing next. This, this is now. We deal with what's in front of us, and then we could talk about what's next after we deal with what's in front of us. But that's just how I operate. What will the win on Saturday night, him becoming undisputed super middleweight champion, mean to him? I think it would mean a lot to him. And not so much of the titles. I think it would mean a lot to him just to get a vic be another victory in his um in in his win column. That's really what it is. It's not like this is gonna be the def this go win that's gonna define his career. This win's gonna get him into the Hall of Fame. No, he's a Hall he's a future Hall of Famer already. So, um it's just another win for him. What is it like training him? Is he is he a, an easy fighter to train? He he see he's, he's the he's the sort of fans' favorite. You know, he's people love him. He's he always comes across like he's so likable. What is he like to train in the gym in a day in day out? He's awesome. He's the he's the coach's dream fighter. He because he the the kid loves he loves working out. He loves being in the gym. You might have to pull him out the gym, but you don't ever got to drag him into it. So it's for me, it's awesome. Well, we'll let you uh, get on. I think you've got a few more interviews to do. But it was lovely to catch up with you, and we'll see you later on in the week. It was lovely to catch up with you, and thank you very much. Thanks, Jonathan.